Hey everybody, I'm Elizabeth McSwan from Emac and Hedwig and today's video is something I've been wanting to do for a little while now and that is give you guys a van tour of my RV Hedwig. So here we go. So I've had my RV Hedwig here for about a year now and I initially got her for photography adventures to be able to go out wherever I wanted to go and take photographs and just be able to not have to worry about things like hotels and rental cars if I needed one and travel and all that sort of stuff. I can just pack her up with all of my photography gear and we can hit the road. So it's been a lot of fun and I'm really, really lucky to be able to have a vehicle like this in my life and to be able to expand my photography opportunities because of her. So some general information about Hedwig. She is a Winnebago Revel with a V, Revel. A 2019, she was built on the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter van, let's try saying that five times fast, chassis. They're 144 inch wheelbase ch chassis. So she's a little bit shorter than your typical RV. She's about 19 and a half feet long or so, which is really great because it's really easy to get into parking spaces and just the kind of turnability and the nimbleness of her is really, really great. And she's super easy to drive. It really didn't take me that long at all to get used to driving kind of this larger vehicle. Even though it's, even though she seems really big, and kind of bulky and and she does sometimes even now that I'm a little bit more used to driving her but it's still super easy to drive her around and it really for how big of a vehicle she is it's been surprisingly easy to drive. Some things about Hedwig that make her unique from other RVs. One is that she's an all season RV. So the water tanks underneath the coach are insulated and they're integrated into the heating system so they can be heated and kept warm so things don't freeze. Another thing is she's got pretty good ground clearance. That was something that I was really looking for when I was looking at RVs was that she had good ground clearance. So I didn't have to worry about going maybe off road or down a, down a, a not so traveled path and have to worry about stuff getting damaged. She also doesn't have a propane tank. A lot of RVs use propane as a means to both heat the coach and also for cooking, you know, on the cooktop. Pretty much everything in the RV is powered by electricity. I've got an induction cooktop. Uh, the only thing that doesn't use electricity is the heating system, which uses the diesel fuel. So it shares the diesel fuel from the fuel tank. All of this electricity is generated by the solar panels. She's got two solar panels on the roof and they in turn charge the three AGM batteries that are underneath the coach. And so I can go pretty long um, between the solar charging and also you know, running the, running the engine that also charges the batteries. And I can go pretty long without having to be plugged into shore power. I think my recent trip that I did, it was about a month and a half long. I think I was plugged in for maybe maybe just half a dozen days, if not less than that. So she's really a great vehicle to go out and have adventures and not have to worry about coming home uh, too soon. So let's take a closer look. So right now we're on the driver's side of the vehicle and I just wanted to point out some key features on the outside of the vehicle before we head inside and I show you around inside. We've got the city fill water and this is what I use when I'm at a campground or I'm at somebody's house and I want to hook up my water hose. I would hook up my water hose right here. It basically bypasses my water tank, which is about 20 gallons or so, 21 gallons. And it just goes right into my kind of sink and uh, wet bath and my shower. This, we're getting right down to the nitty gritty here. Uh, this is my cassette toilet and I just wanted to unlock it for you guys so that you can see what it looks like. The cassette toilet works, it basically looks like a suitcase. So this whole unit comes out of the van and I have the advantage of not having to necessarily go to a dump station in order to dump it. I can dump it at a dump station if I want to, but it's easier to dump it basically in any toilet. My preferred method of dumping is at a pit toilet, so that's the toilet. Some key features here on the passenger side, I've got two kind of regular wall plugs here. So if I wanted to power something outside, like a projector or something, 
I could do it right here. And then over here, I've got a place that I could plug in an additional solar panel. If I found that my solar panels on the roof, maybe it was, maybe I was parked in the shade or something, I just wasn't getting really the charge to my batteries that I wanted, I could always carry on board a separate solar panel and just kind of throw it out into the grass or something where it was nice and sunny, plug it in here and just get a little bit more charge. Okay, so now let's open the sliding door here. We've got some really cool features just in the sliding door panel here. So this is a table that come, can come down and uh, I've got the leg stored inside here, but this is a nice tabletop for, <laughs> pretty dusty, um, for when you, know, you wanna eat outside or something. You can have a little picnic outdoors here. On this side of the, of the table here, I've got all of my stickers. These are all of the places that Hedwig and I have been that I've photographed. So that's the qualification. I need to have photographed where we went and then I put the sticker on here. Other things in here, I can fill my water, I fill my water tank at the bottom here. There's also a gravity fill just inside here. Um, also, right this hole here is a spray port. I took it out because the fitting broke and I basically just capped the pipe here and didn't put the spray port back on. But there is a spray port that goes in here that I will be putting on eventually. Basically, if you have any kind of muddy boots or gear, you can just hose them off using the spray port before throwing them back into the van. I've got my fresh water drain and I've also have, this is my winterizing valve. This is what I use if I wanna winterize my vehicle. Above the door here, I've got an awning that comes out. The awning is wind sensitive, so if it senses a lot of movement in the vehicle, it just retracts by itself and you don't have to worry about it. These screens here, this door screen here is has been really, really great. This is something that I went and got myself. This didn't come with the van. Uh, it's by this company, Rolef, up in Canada. They make these really great custom made to fit various different kinds of class B's screens. And so it's got a zipper up the side here. It's also got a zipper over here and a zipper here. So I can roll it up in a few different ways depending on how I want to configure it. And then when it's down and in place, all I have to do is pull on this tab and it comes up and it, it closes uh, via this magnetic closure. This screen has been a really big help, especially it, in when I've been traveling in kind of more buggy climates, being able to have the door open, but not have to worry about letting the bugs in. We're gonna start up here at the cab first. Um, this is what the cab looks like. This is something I bought separately and had installed later. The head unit that came with the RV, the screen, really didn't do much. It didn't have any navigation or anything like that. So this one is Apple CarPlay compatible. I don't remember the, it's a, by Alpine. I don't remember the model offhand, but I will link it in the description below if anybody's interested. It doesn't quite sit flush the way that the factory screen did, but I, I like it. It's, it's really great, I think. The seats are pretty comfortable. These seats swivel backwards, which is really nice because when you're dealing with such a small amount of living space, it's nice to integrate the cab into part of that living space, right? So it isn't just a separate place for driving, it's also a place that can be used for sitting and lounging when the vehicle is parked. And here's another shot of the cab from a little bit further back. Here you can see my driver's seat is swiveled. It swivels a little bit more than this, but uh, for now we're gonna leave it like that. If we look above the cab here at this shelf, this shelf my dad and I made, it's, uh, it's made of wood and I basically, I, I put this metal, this metal is magnetic. I have these little hooks here um, that are magnetic and they really just, they stick on pretty well so I can hang my coats and stuff on them. And, and then I covered it with this trunk liner carpet stuff that I got on Amazon. I store all kinds of stuff up here, just kind of depends on what I'm doing and where I'm traveling to but it, there's just a lot of storage up there, which is really great. One of the main reasons why I wanted to do this shelf, uh, in addition to the storage that it would provide, was to also make this privacy curtain that I wanted to attach underneath it. So this privacy curtain, it actually functions as a, as a curtain. That's it there. I also made this curtain. Um, and I don't know if you can see uh, this fabric here is really cool for, uh, for us travelers. It's 
all travel references. It also functions for a little bit of insulation. There's an insulating material in between this fabric and the gray fabric here on the other side. So in the winter time and in the summer time, it just helps keep the temperature in the RV side cool because all the glass, of course, in the cab um, doesn't insulate very well. So having this curtain here has been a really, really big help. And for privacy, not just for me, for when I'm in the vehicle, but also for when I am parked at say the grocery store or something like that, I can just draw these clothes and just be a little bit more inconspicuous and not have people be able to see through my kind of windshield into my RV. Onto the rest of the RV here. This is my dinette couch. This actually becomes a sleeping space. You just take this off here. This counter comes up like this and then this whole kind of piece comes down and then you put you put the back of the seat on top of that and it kind of makes this sleeping space for probably a child or a small adult would be it would be best for. We've got a table um, and it comes up like this. I just need to push my seat a little further back, but I usually just eat at it like this. There's also a, a cabinet up here and I have my Instapot. This is the mini size. It just barely, when you, when you turn it a certain way, fits into this cabinet. It's just it's just deep enough to fit the, the mini Instapot. And then I've got just like plastic bags and um, this is my toiletry case. Whenever I go out, if I'm gonna be say showering at a Planet Fitness or something like that, I'll take this whole thing out and just take it with me. So it's really convenient to have all of the toiletries that I need kind of in one thing here. And then I've got some additional electronic stuff, batteries and and little kind of random things, battery chargers, and then I have a few, and then uh, I have a couple guidebooks here on that shelf. I also really love the windows. There's a nice window on this side, and it opens like this. So if it's if it's raining outside or something like that, I can have the window open without having to worry about the water coming in. And if I want to open the window and not worry about the bugs coming in, I can just put down the screen like this. And if I want privacy, I can put the shade up like this. So let's move into the kitchen here. This is the sink. It's a foldable sink. It comes up like this. And I've got my sink like that. This is, of course, my induction cooktop. And then below that, I have my refrigerator and then some, some drawers here. I have like utensils and, you know, spatulas and stuff like that. I also have this kind of grab quick sort of shelving in here. I've got some you know, coffee filters, some spices, you know, soap, that kind of thing. And then I've got above here, I've got a, a storage container, storage cabinet. I have my saucepan and coffee grinder and some bowls and plates and things like that. And then I've got another one of these. These are magnetic. They just go on magnetically and I haven't had any issues really with them coming off while I'm on the road. There was one time that that that, that the, these ones fell off, but it was, it was really bumpy <laughs> most of the time. If I'm going to if I know that I'm going to be on really rough roads, I will take that one off because this is not worth maybe potentially damaging um, the induction cooktop here. I do want to get some kind of covering for this just in case something falls. Uh, I don't have to worry about cracking it. We've got one more drawer here cabinet this is the pantry so i keep uh, some food items in here um and i have and then i have a blender down there with some cutting boards and stuff so a combination of food items and other things i really love hooks hooks are my friend they're great for storage of course so i've got dish towel a regular quick dry bath towel this is my bathrobe here this is my laundry my dirty laundry container i just love having it just right here i can just toss dirty clothes in there and then underneath it here i just has a i just have a shoe rack and i will just put my shoes like flip-flops and stuff kind of in the bottom ones here I do have to reconfigure this so that both of these things aren't using these hooks. 
So maybe uh, cutting, cutting this thing down a little bit, but and maybe attaching it, say, here on a different hook so that it's not interfering as much with this uh, laundry bag here. The bathroom here is pretty small, but it does the job. So there's the shower there, a nice little fan for ventilation up there, and then the cassette toilet. So this is the bed here. It's really comfortable. I do have a foam topper underneath the sheets here just for a little bit of extra cushioning and it's super comfortable that way. And then when I'm traveling, I put my clothes in here because I don't like to have to root around underneath the bed for my clothes. I just like to have them just easy access. So having my clothes in this thing here and then I kind of sleep diagonally with my feet here kind of like that and it's not too bad. What's great about this RV is that there are USB plugs everywhere. So there are two here. There are also two in the kitchen by the sink in the cabinet above the sink. There's also two in the uh, underneath the cabinet over the dinette couch. So there are tons and tons of USB ports. There are also a lot of just regular wall like outlet things. There are also some nice reading lights. So if I wanted to use a reading light instead of the overhead light, and the overhead light has a couple of different brightnesses, I could also do that. So this is my screen back in here. Um, it can be a screen, a bug screen, but it's also a blackout screen. So right now I have it in blackout mode and it works really, really well. I don't have to worry about putting up the screens on the windows because I already have it built in to this screen, which is really great. One of the cool features about the bed is that it can be raised. So if I push this button here, that's this button here. I'm going to go, and that's the air conditioning up there. That it's about to hit. I can only use the air conditioning when I'm plugged into shore power. So now I have all of this space down here that I can utilize for whatever I want to. This is underneath the bed from the outside and as you can see it's not very well organized. I'm still trying to work out how to best store all the things that I need to store down here but I have two really large bins. I have one here and one over here that's kind of partially open. I usually have in this one, I have like my camping chairs, although I had, I threw one of them over in this bin when I was looking for something, but I have usually have my camping chairs. I have all of my weather gear. So like my rain pants, rain coat. I also will put my tripods in here, my camo blinds, kind of anything sort of outdoorsy I'll put into this bin. And then I'll usually, I usually have things in this other bin like, toilet paper, cleaning supplies, anything for the van that I need, sort of more housekeeping stuff I'll put in here. And then I have other things like these are my levelers to level the van out when I'm staying on uneven ground. I've got my toolkit here um, and this has my water hose in it. It's a really large container for such a small thing, but there you go. Um, some emergency DEF and uh, some more levelers over there. So. That's that. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I hope that you enjoyed this van tour of my RV Hedwig. I really enjoy going on photography adventures and sharing those adventures and images with you guys. So please give this video a like if you like it and subscribe to my channel. It would really help me out a lot. You can also follow me on Instagram. I post a lot of my work on Instagram. It's the best way to see my work aside from here on YouTube. You can also find us on Patreon for as little as $2 a month. You can get early access to videos like this along with a bunch of other really cool stuff. So I hope you check it out. And until the next video, everyone, take care, happy adventuring, happy shooting. See you later.